it's June the 2nd and we got a phone call from this one farmer in this field that he planted about three weeks ago and the corn plants are up really good great shape um, but now all of a sudden the plants are turning purple and um, he's getting some spots in the field where plants are starting to miss and starting to die out so this is a, a field that was in sod last couple of years so four or five years in grass we plowed it up took the first cutting grass off plowed it up put it into corn and now the problem is we're having wireworm issues which are the little golden worms which you'll see on the video as well too in a close-up picture of them they're starting to eat at the roots and so the corn plants are starting to turn purple and that's a phosphorus deficiency but it's not from lack of phosphorus in the soil we put 1152 at 250 pounds in here so be lots and lots of phosphorus here but they're eating the roots is what the wireworms go after. They start eating the root system, and then because of that, the plant can't get enough phosphorus up into the plant itself, and so it's showing the symptoms of phosphorus deficiency, but it's from lack of root development because the wireworms are starting to eat the roots. There is poncho treated on all this corn seed, but the problem is when you plow it up first year into sod, that population's really high. Now the life cycle of these wireworms basically is such that they're a six year cycle. Leather jackets are one year, so basically leather jackets lay in the, in the fall time, they'll hatch out the following August and away they go. These wireworms basically is from a click beetle, a small little black beetle, and basically they'll lay in a sod field only, they will not lay in a corn field because there's nothing for the eggs to feed off of, and so they'll basically lay into a sod field. So the longer you have a field in grass, the more the population keeps building up. And so, um, so what happens is, after six years, um, they'll basically mature into an adult, and they will climb up the grass stems, and they will fly off, and they will mate within about two or three weeks, and the female will lay the eggs back down again, and the cycle carries on again. But so when you look at some of these fields, you'll get them, you get the wire rims all different sizes. You'll get bigger ones like this, and then you get smaller ones all the way down. So the small ones are basically one and two year olds, the larger ones are basically four and five years of age, and they also then will hatch out, or uh, sorry, they will basically um, mutate into a, a click beetle and then basically um, take off, usually in May they'll hatch out, April, May they'll start hatching out and away they go again. So the life cycle carries on. So basically what we want to do with a field like this is we want to make sure on a regular basis if we have a field that's going from grass uh, sod into corn for the first year, we want to treat it with a product called Force. Now Force goes in the planter and basically it's an insecticide that goes in the furrow. Now it won't kill the wireworms, what it will do is repel them because it's a very strong smelling insecticide and it'll repel them away from the rows and it'll last about, I think about 60 days and so by that time the plants are fairly well developed and it shouldn't be an issue. So. So again, if you have any fields um, that are looking purple, walk out there, take a look at them, and see what the issue is. We can't do much for this upcoming year, but the following year, for sure next year, we'll treat this field for two years in a row. So the first year in the sod, and also the second year, we should look at treating them too. Now that we know there's an issue on these farms, and the other fields that we're gonna plow up and do as well too, we'll make sure we stay on it right away. The neighbor across the street, um, we've done his, but this guy unfortunately uh, didn't get a chance to put the force on and now we've got these issues. So we're probably gonna lose maybe 10 or 15%. It's not that bad in the field, but I've seen fields of this size basically with 90% of the field wiped out. So again, you got issues on certain spots, usually on the hillside areas you'll get more plants that are dying, but with the ideal weather we're having with the heat and the rain, um, it takes the stress off the plants and the roots continue to develop fairly well. So hopefully this plant, this field will come along fairly good, which I'm quite sure it will, but excuse me, for next year most definitely we will be treating it with force to make sure we uh, alleviate these problems. Mm -hmm.